Welcome to basic install of the Drupal content management platform. Let's just start off and talk about exactly how Drupal works and what Drupal is. Drupal is used to build websites. It's a highly modular open source web content management framework with an emphasis on collaboration. It's extensible, standards compliant, and strives for clean code and a small footprint. We could use uh, Drupal to create an internet portal, to create a personal blog, departmental website, a corporate website, an e-commerce website, a resource directory, an online newspaper, even an image gallery. A dedicated security team over at Drupal keeps it secure by responding to threats and issuing security updates. And if you go to their website, drupal.org, you will see they're pretty up to date with releasing these updates and responding. There's also a thriving online community for Drupal. And just check out their forums, really find out what's going on and the general discussions. Over here you see there's a lot of people asking various questions about how to do certain things in Drupal. And hopefully by the end of this tutorial, you will be able to know how to do a basic install. More of the advanced features will come up later. So let's get started. Drupal's design goals include uh, being able to run well on inexpensive web hosting accounts and being able to scale up to massive distributed sites. So the former goal means using the most popular technology and the latter means careful tight coding. Drupal's technology stack is pretty scalable. And at its core, it has a lightweight framework. And this is what we're going to download right now is the framework. So let's get the newest release. We'll click on download Drupal 5.3. We'll save that to disk. I'm going to save it to my desktop. So this is the basic Drupal install 5.3 right now. And if we open it up, you'll see it has the file structure. And all of this basically needs to go on your new website. Our next step is installing Drupal on our website. I use WSFTP Pro and we're going to work on the URL motogra.com today. So I accessed their root folder on their website and there's nothing there. This is pretty much a empty website. If you look, it actually has nothing on it. Fresh clear canvas to work on. So I'm going to take all of my files. Okay, and now I'm going to select all the files in the Drupal installation on the zip file. And I'm just going to drag them into our root folder on the website. This is the easiest way to do it. There's another way to do it where you could issue a Unix command. That's more for the advanced users, though. We'll keep this pretty simple. So I just installed all the files from the Drupal download onto our URL, motogra.com. And if I go to the URL now, you'll see Drupal Happily is installed. And we see a little Drupal icon. And once we add our configuration elements, we should be good to go with this website. I want to talk about the database installation for a second because it, it might be different on different web hosting accounts. So we use cPanel on Apache over here. So I can create my database, give it a name, give it a password in my website's back end control panel, which can be accessed by colon 2082 or slash cPanel really depends on your web host. So talk to your web host, find out how to get access to this stuff.
And this is generally how cPanel looks. Very easy to use. Okay, so I'm actually done with my configuration for Drupal. I can go back to my site and just enter the 11. Okay. If you click on advanced options over here, this is where you could actually indicate if you have a remote or a local server. You might have a database located on a different server. Our database is local, so we'll browse it. Now, Drupal installation has been complete. Basically, that is our basic install. We have no problems, no issues. If there were errors, it would list the errors over here. But let's just go on to our new site, as Drupal says. And here it is. Welcome to your new Drupal site. Obviously, this is the default install skin, which is something that you're going to want to change relatively quickly and that's what we call the look and feel of a Drupal site is the theme and you can surf Google and look for different Drupal themes to mix and match create your own custom theme or you go to the Drupal site, drupal.org slash project slash themes, and you could actually peruse many different themes that they have. In order to proceed, we need to create an account. We can't just go to the administrative section, and that's what these instructions are telling us here. So let's create an account, and I'll call let's count admin. And I'll say the email is admin at motogra.com. But we are actually allowed into the admin area since we're the first user. Drupal assumes that the first user created will be you, the admin. This is the administration area, how it looks by default. And let me just copy my password here in case I have to re-log on later. Welcome to the administration area. If you click on the left pane here, you can actually get right into creating content. Look at your history or go on to more of the magical elements of Drupal, which content management, site building, site configuration, user management, etc, etc.